Did you know that Elon Musk loves tiny homes and he actually has a boxable? And guess what? You can get one too. We're gonna tour the factory, talk to the CEO, and also show you a sneak peek of the next generation boxable. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am at the Boxable Factory, which is really cool. I've been trying to get here for a year. And I'm with Alexis, who is going to be giving us the full rundown of just how cool what they're doing is. And we're gonna talk about what Boxable is, what they do, the products, and then I think just as cool, how they actually make this stuff. So let's get started. Let's do it, okay. Yeah. First and foremost, welcome to Factory One. This building is 170,000 square feet. Wow. We moved into this building July, 2021 and then okay. really started production of our 19 by 19 casita in September of that year. All the main production happens in this building, factory one. Right. Factory two is parts production and research and development. And factory three is warehouse space. So it does give us a combined square footage between all three factories of about 400,000 square feet of manufacturing oh space. That's crazy. And this brings us to our assembly stage, which by the way, has 11 substations of its okay. own. And this is really where the casita starts to take form and starts to resemble a home. And right here under station two, we get a good look at what we call the, the core of the casita. Right. Where you have the there you know, we go. Yeah, there kitchen it is. on the right hand side. Right. Bathroom on the left. Okay. And is that a uh, small water heater there? That's um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, 30 gallons tank. for the water heater. Oh, that's actually quite a bit. So, OK. Plus all of the lights will be LEDs inside of the casita. Right. All the appliances will be electric and energy efficient. Right. If you combine this with the mini split units in our insulated wall technology, we're looking at uh, estimated energy cost of about $28 per month. No way. So pretty good. Oh wow. Man, I wish we could get that for my house. Yeah. Oh geez. <laughs> And right here under station five okay. is where they typically begin installing the roof. Gotcha. They've already gotten pretty far into the process where they have folded the roof onto itself into three layers, right. as you can see right here. And obviously the reason we do this is so that we can get the casita to its final compact folded form right. at the end of the production line. Right. But the one technology that lets us have a folding house in the first place is that steel eye beam with the hinge that I showed you earlier. Right. Right. So not only do we use them in the floor panels, right. but also in the ceiling panels, as you can see, yeah, it's right there right in the middle. There. Okay. And, and if you want to see this genius. exposed, it's also over here on the ground to the right. Oh, excellent. Cool. Yeah, those are, um, you know, <laughs> they'll support some weight there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That I-beam cool. is actually one of 60 plus patents and patent applications we filed here at Boxable. Really? So oh, thanks to that okay. and other technology, yeah. we're able to achieve an estimated shipping cost of about three to $10 per month. Wow, that's crazy. And so it looks like you've got some sort of a pin that goes in there that allows it to rotate and then the other two are like locking pins? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so once it's up, it's just... Mm -hmm. But also it does mean that the houses, when they're, when they're placed, they are not permanently there like a regular house, you can... Uh, fold it back up again. So it's one of the coolest things yeah. about the casita. We've tested you can fold the thing back up and move it up to 10 times without any significant work to the gaskets or the hinges. Right, right. Um, okay. may maybe even beyond that, but that's yeah. what we tested yeah, for. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like if you do that that many times in your life, then uh, go 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 you. But yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, it won't explode or anything <laughs> after 10 times. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's pretty genius. And uh, another common question I get is about how our panels unfold and connect. Right. So if you look at station six as an example, right. you'll see that we have these thick black lines in the center layer right here. Yes. Which are these black rubber gaskets that we use for the water and dust resistance of the casita. Okay. For when the, okay. For when the ceiling panels unfold and connect, right. um, the panels interconnect and uh, those gaskets are what help prevent any water or dust. Right, and so they sort of interleave with each other. And yeah, so, yeah, it's very similar to a car door closing shut. Okay, if you think okay. About it. yeah, yeah, okay. And additionally, when the casita is delivered and unfolded, they also lay down a roof liner seal on top of the casita, which offers okay. more protection against water trying to come in. As we travel down, we'll see that uh, under station seven, right. they're making the cutouts for the double paned windows. Yes, yes. We, we would then install those windows under station eight, as well as uh, doing the window sills, the trim for the doors, and the doors themselves. 
And then here under station nine is where we test all of the electrical components and okay. finalize the wiring for the casita. And then we usually install the roll-on adhesive vinyl flooring under station 10. You can see okay. that, a roll of that material right here. Right, right. Okay, so that's the... And then at that point, since it's already rolled out at this point, how do you then prepare it for shipping? Um, so we we do leave out some strips for okay. where the folds are, so okay. that we can so that we don't mess up the floor right, when it's right, folded right. up. Okay. Uh, we do clean up the casita inside and out right. before we get to, before we get to the final inspection under station eleven, where they pack in the appliances and then fold up the entire unit. Gotcha. So prefabricated homes or manufactured homes are nothing new. Think of right. like trailer homes, for instance, yeah. they've been around yeah. for a while. Right. But the magic of Boxable is that we're even able to take a building like this under station 10, which right. measures 19 by 19 feet on uh, on the sides. Right. And about uh, 10 and a half feet tall. And we're able to fold it up into a unit down there at the end. Yeah, that's Which crazy. is about a third of the size. <laughs> right. It measures 19 <laughs> by eight and a half feet by about 12 and a half feet tall. Right. But at these dimensions, we do not require a wide load shipping permit. Right. And therefore, we're able to bypass all the costs and fees associated exactly. with that for shipping. And it's, so you, you ship it vertically like this. So it's got, it, it sits up like this. Yes. Yeah. Correct. And so therefore it just fits on the back of a semi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's just, it's remarkable. I mean, that's obviously was the vision was it's like, can we fold it up small enough to fit on a truck? And yeah. it's like right there. Well, let's get you walking in because you might as well, you get to go in the tiny house here. Look, it has a Tesla. Um... Oh, they got a power. Oh, there we go. That's the shot right there. That's the shot. <laughs> That'll make everybody happy. So you can just hook that up. So that's a full power wall for the, I guess with what you're running, it's not that much electricity, so it could probably run for a decent amount of time off of that if the power went out. Yeah, so, possibly yeah. could. Yeah. Let's well, take a look inside. Yeah. These are what we call our dress-up casitas. Okay. Because basically what the customer gets is a white box, similar to this right. one. And then they can dress it up however they want on the outside, kind of like a DIY, do-it-yourself kind of project. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, tiny house woman. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, the thing that I remember from when this was at CES last year was just how spacious it is. Because mm -hmm. you say 360 square feet and you're like, oh, that's nothing. And you're like, no, it's actually perfectly, like, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. I really like it back here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Do we get the thumbs up? Do we get the approval? Yeah, we get the thumbs up. So I would assume that it comes unfurnished. Yes. Um, and so, but for things like this, because this is obviously a really great, you know, divider, would this be something that someone could purchase from you or that you would know where they could purchase something like this? Mm. We do make that middle closet, so okay. we oh. may offer it as an accessory later on. Got right. It. Yeah. Okay. okay, because this, this is like the perfect, yeah. And in terms of appliances and stuff, I can't remember what is included and what, what do you have? Is like the refrigerator included or is that? Super easy way to think okay. about this is when you walk in, everything on the right half is what you get with the casino. <laughs> oh, there included, we go. That makes it easy. Not included. Okay. okay. <laughs> so you got to provide your own TV, unfortunately, right? Yeah. But, yeah. No, but this is great though. So, I mean, you get, if you think about the cost of a new house, this reduces the cost a lot because usually you have to buy your own stove, you have to buy your own refrigerator, your own microwave. This mm -hmm. is a very roomy oh. kitchen. Yeah, it is. It is. Awesome and open. Uh, I guess like, so we've got large window here. I'm going to get you guys in the shot. Large window here. Yes, say, say hi. <laughs> window here. Door here. So you were saying this is like a dressed up casita because, I mean, Patio obviously deck. you can put in yeah. some decking and things like mm -hmm. that as well. But this is really nice. I mean, this is a very livable, like, uh, outdoor space here that you could go in. Oh, yeah. We got the grill back here. <laughs> this is real. Oh, cool. And that's actually, it takes up almost no room, like the mini split outside yeah. and the yeah. electric box and all that stuff is very small. So this is nice. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty cool. And I also like the uh, the one with the siding on it and everything to give it a real nice flare. So is that roof just, just decorative in that case it, for that? Um, you know, it, it may offer a bigger snow load. Uh, okay, to uh, to a yeah, flat roof. this would be a great cabin. Yeah. Oh my gosh, a yeah. mountain cabin. Yeah. Speaking of Utah, so for, if you're in Utah, just buy one of these and you can put it in the mountains for yourself. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. All right, yep, got to check out the bathroom. Wash your dryer in here. All in one unit where oh, we're looking at this. Oh, yeah. Sunday. Yeah, we were at Lowe's looking at that because we were like, we really want that because then you don't have to keep doing all the switching and mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah, I noticed the exhaust outlet out there too, and that's all built into the wall, so you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the uh, do not, so please do not use the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, so. it has a lot. Yeah, this is great. Wow. 
Is the security camera, is that normally built in or is that just no, something? No, yeah, okay. for, I was like, just us. making sure that there's nobody doing weird things in here, so. Yeah, and the shower is like a really nice shower. And the water heater unit is, where's the water heater unit? In this model, it's over yeah. here in the corner underneath the countertops. Oh, okay, okay. Over there in the corner. Oh, awesome. And it's just like, 10 years from now when the thing like has issues or something like that is there an easy access like can you get through it from well, here or these all these are pre-production units that we're standing in yeah okay. um, you know the full production version may vary right uh, but for this one you just slide out the stove and you can access it behind oh the cool okay yeah so that, well, that's obvious yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> why make it more complicated than it needs yeah. to be so yeah. yeah and i love this and this is a very nice um uh, electric range for mm -hmm. yeah okay cool and and i know you said about 28 dollars a month but like a like how many kilowatt hours of electricity? Do you have any kind of concept of like how much it uses? I have no clue. Yeah, I was just curious. I mean, obviously it can't be, it's just because $28 varies state by state because yeah. some are cheaper than others. So I was yeah. just kind of curious as to how much, but it's, it's not much, that's for sure. But in, in terms of the ability to expand these things and to utilize multiple units together, what, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so you can currently connect casitas side by side or even stack them on top right, of each other right up to three okay and to access the other levels you just need stairs on the outside yes oh right yeah you would need that yeah but um so in terms of putting them like uh, horizontally putting them together mm -hmm. how would you do that because you were saying like these don't have um doors on the back so so because the two-door casita is currently what we're producing right the second doorway can lead into the next unit. okay so it just basically yeah. you take the door off and it's just a, a yeah. entrance way okay. we're looking at ways um to maybe knock off a wall and do it that way right uh, there's right. other options we're exploring right now gotcha. the barn door actually works really well in terms of space because you don't have to swing it out so you can put yeah. this the, uh, yeah. and I also really like this um, <laughs> I don't know why we all have still washers and dryers separate it's just more logical to have something like that anyway wow this is great and of course we got you know big mouth bass over here so. <laughs> Oh, he's, oh, dead. he's no! kind of sad. No, <laughs> Billy. Oh. We'll hold the box of funeral later. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> okay. So, oh, oh, the Caribbean. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, no, I kind of like the mountain cabin too, but I also do like the Caribbean. You know, just this is great. For I love that you guys are just like, hey, let's try it this way. Let's try it this way and see what we got. Uh, oh yeah. I would, I would rent this Airbnb. Heck yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking too, is even beyond primary dwelling is like, if you have land behind you, your primary house, this is a great thing to put up. You can Airbnb, in-laws, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's perfect. It's like a way of just kind of expanding your, 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 you know, bigger house if you need it. So, yeah. This one I think is a full size. We did see a queen in the first model. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Right. This is like, you should definitely sell this because yeah. this looks like, this is kind of clutch. You know, otherwise it's just sort of a little bit too like visible of the bed yeah. right there. So that's great. I really like that. I did want to showcase all the water connections as well. Oh, that's on the side yeah. of the unit there. Okay. Yeah. You got the clean water inlet there, gray water in the middle. And the three inch sewer pipe is in the corner. It's the thicker pipe down there. Okay. And so just hook that in. Mm -hmm. So gray water being from the sink. I, I guess, shower. oh, I just, okay. So it's not going to a separate tank. You're just saying that's the exhaust yeah. for the gray yeah. water. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Then what is this, Adobe? There we yes. go, okay. So here we go, this is this is appropriate for this sort of area. Little Southwestern theme. Oh, nice. It's nice and, nice and toasty in here too, I like it. It's kind of crazy how just changed it to have a vibe Right, right, it is. In the nighttime area of the casita. Here you'll find the bathroom next to the bedroom, exactly where it should be. And speaking of the bedroom, nice yeah. oh. I need to worry myself. Yeah, I really like yeah the, the window lighting and everything. Is that standard or is the window? That, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, not the sorry, not the window. I mean the the mirror with oh, the, the backlighting. Yeah, yeah, that is standard. That's great. Yeah, that's just a really nice like mm -hmm. as I put on all my makeup. <laughs> but yeah, but I also like just how easy it is to like you know this is like no big deal to make some changes and make it mm -hmm. feel really different just with some 
maybe not. This one actually. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Little Frank Lloyd Wright kind of mm -hmm. ish. Oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> So what other destinations could we have? We got the mountains, we got the beach, we got the southwest. I don't know. I feel like we kind of, yeah, you guys mm -hmm. covered it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only thing I could think would be yeah, ski chalet, but it's already, you've got that with the first yeah. one, so. This one has a double-sided fridge. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. And it looks like some of these units are, it looks like this is different from the other one in terms of like the, the appliances that are in here. Yeah, they were different. Um, yeah, so you know, obviously prototyping and figuring out what works the best for yeah. that. So, yeah. okay. This is great. Love it. Wow. Um, only thing we didn't check out yet is the electrical box. Um, oh yeah, it, it's yeah, easily visible in the first one. Okay. It's 125 amps. Gotcha. Um, we'll see that on the way oh, back. That's pretty good for that size. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't think. What do we have? 200 for our whole house. It's like. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty, pretty good. Reasonable. And we're still developing the final price for one of these things, but to give you a baseline, our right. last customer paid 60000 for one of these. Okay. Wow. And then is, is that, is that 60000 including the transportation to the location, or is that? No, it does not include Okay, well, that's fine. That's just, you know, just like trying to like, you know, think, stack it up in your head. Mm -hmm. So obviously if you lived in Arizona or something, it would be cheaper than if you lived in New York because right. you'd have to pay the shipping costs. So, right. Yeah, so it would be unreasonable to expect to have the, that built into the cost because mm -hmm. you don't know how far you're gonna have to ship it. Here we go, the whole thing. Yes, I'm Paolo Tiramani, I'm CEO of uh, Boxball, one of the founders, one of three founders. And uh, prior to this, I ran an IP licensing company, which for your listeners is intellectual property. So it's basically patents. And for us, it was all mechanical patents, no design patents. Even though I'm an industrial designer, mechanical engineer, uh, these are all mechanical patents. They're the ones that have legs on them. And ran that business, started it, ran it for decades. It was, uh, it was quite profitable. And then uh, monetized it five or six years ago to basically exit that business. It was, right. We had a great run. Um, so so monetized, monetized us, it was pretty significant for us. And for years, uh, so our business was in, inventing, sounds a little bit Rube Goldberg, but it was right. just inventing things. Right. Um, and our, we had some very strong principles that we developed over the years that if you develop, um, if you develop products that have value, that are priced right for the mass market, they will find an outlet, they will find a value. and. Licensing to our licensees over the years, of course, the grass always seems greener. Right. You say like, I wish they'd do that a little bit, and we have fantastic licensees, licensees, by the way. Right. But really fantastic licensees. But you always say, well, they could have done that a little bit better. Than that. So we sort of harbored that for a number of years and said, okay, well, if we were to become operators in space, what would that look like? If we actually right. were to be the operators, and what should we do? So in the same way that an accountant or a CPA knows how to count. <laughs> right. Uh, he doesn't care, what, they don't care what they count. Right. It's the counting, <laughs> right? So if we're problem solvers, uh, we're not specific to an industry, especially in, in, in hardware as opposed to software, where we have less, much less experience. Right. So, but on the hardware side, as consumer goods guys, we said, well, let's find a problem. We're not going to come up with an idea. We're going to come up with a problem. So right. we looked around at autos and, and uh, you know, could not scale. And there's a certain big dog in that space. Yeah. You know, that I would never want to compete with. We saw their power wall out yeah, there. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we looked at building construction. <clears throat> and it was like, whoa, this is really pre-industrial. By pre-industrial, I mean it's not built in a factory right. because they're big. So they're built in an open field. Right. Uh, there's no economies of scale. It's regional business, local business. That's why we have all these problems with with um, varying uh, codes, yes, uh, codes yes. as opposed to standards. The automobile folks have standards. And we said, wow, so what's the problem? Why is this still in a pre-industrial condition? And we, we realized that, uh, we realized that uh, it's because buildings are big. So if you right. looked at the field solutions, uh, variable quality, long lead times, high, very, very high cost, no economies of scale or volume. And then right. we looked in the factory and said, well, there are factory solutions. What's wrong with that? And it's like, well, they're 14 foot wide yeah. and they're illegal to ship right. without permits and flag cars and overnights at state lines. And forget the overseas market so American labor can produce product for export. Right. Can't right. do any of that. Yeah. So, so we're like, oh, that's a problem. And then, so we studied it further and realized that most residential construction in rough numbers is about two thirds empty space. 
Right. So he said, oh, aha, how about we fold it down? Really easy to say. <laughs> Here we are, two years later, five years later. Right. And he said, how about we fold that down, and does that make sense? And does, does the stuff that cannot be folded down should be dollar dense in labor and, uh, and equipment. So we're talking right. the labor to install dishwashers and stairs and things like that. And the rest is empty space. It's not dollar dense, it's inexpensive. And how does that lay out? Lay out? And what we realized was the architects, it all centers around the plumbing, it all centers around the wet. Right. So they'll run the plumbing down, down one side of the house and then they'll put all the, all the cabinets and, and toilets right. and stuff. Right. So architecture has sort of grown up around around plumbing to really, who, who would think of it that way? Right. Say, oh, that's good. And then we realized if we, if we had just six foot, just six foot, five or six feet as a corridor right. to put the dollar dense stuff, does that work? And it works in spades. So you can have a kitchen where all the wet stuff is in around one side. You can still do an island and everything. Fold right. it out, you've got a giant kitchen. So, wow, you know, right. big aha moment. So, and then we looked at some, some principal numbers so from the black top, 13 and a half foot off the black top, right. maximum height or 14 foot uh, overseas, eight and a half foot maximum, length is variable. Right. So we came up with a formula. The first formula that was keep the dollar dense stuff in the, in the corridor, right. um, in the dollar dense area, uh, unpack it uh, to create uh, something that triples in size. So bang, here's the aha moment, right. the numero uno, the first one where we said, wow, you know, we, we, can, we can have a 40 foot clear span with this huge nine and a half foot ceiling, eight, 19 foot wide on the short side. Oh, right. What can't we build with that? So then yeah. the team went out, lots of measurements, and it's like, we can build most things most of the time. Right. Like, oh, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah. And then that was the aha that you asked for, which I'm answering in a very, very lengthy no, way. No, no, Amazing. Yeah. Well, you spent a huge amount of time with us and we really oh, appreciate enjoyable. it. Thank yeah. you so Thank much. You. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And maybe we'll get to take a quick peek at the um, the new prototype yeah, larger we, house we, too. We, so. we, we, and that will fit on the, the semi-trailer as well. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, well, yeah. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. So yes. So anyway, thank you so much. And maybe we'll insert that yeah. somewhere in the video. Who knows? But anyway. <laughs>